experimental particle physics. It's quite a mouthful, huh? And maybe it sounds mysterious and complicated. Well, I am an experimental particle physicist and I'm here today because I want to talk to you about how particle physics can answer big question in our lives. I'm sure most of you at some point have wondered how does nature work? What is the universe made of? And the answer to these questions are actually very small. It's a handful of tiny particles. And these particles and their interactions with each other make up the whole universe and everything we know. And this is what I study. And I studied this along with thousands of collaborators. We proposed, designed, built, and performed our experiments. And I'm sure you're wondering, why do we need thousands of scientists to catch a tiny particle? Why do we need giant machines? So let's go back. In nature, we have observed just a handful of fundamental particles, which we have classified into a very nice theory called the standard model. And it does represent the standard way that we understand uh, this particle to behave. The point is that once some of the heavier, more interesting particles in this nice table are created, they all transform back into lightest and more stable particles. So in the end, most of the matter that we know in the universe around us, us, everything is made up of only three of these particles in this table. Let me just help you picture this. You know Lego bricks, right? So maybe you played with them as a child or maybe you bought them for your child or maybe you still play with them like I do. So if you think you wanna build a universe, then you need to go to the store and then you would buy a box of Lego bricks with only three type of bricks only three different ones, but then you need really a lot of them, about 10 with 80 zero after it. But then you will build everything. It's kind of crazy, right? So we now think that the set of the fundamental particles that exist in nature is actually bigger than three, as I said, but this other particle which existed in the beginning, they quickly transform back to something ordinary are very hard to find now. And the ones that are created in nature from radioactive decays, from space showers that come down to earth, they're just not enough and too few for our experiments. So we need to build special machines and detectors. And how did a girl like me coming from a very artistic and non-scientific family growing up in a village in North of Italy ended up in all this. <laughs> I was curious. I was very curious and inquisitive and I wanted to understand everything. And I was really fascinated by philosophy, by art and by science. And if you think they all provide tools, even if very different, to explore this feeling of belonging to something bigger. And I started looking at the stars and until I learned that I had to study the infinitely small to understand the infinitely huge. And I got hooked when I realized that I had the possibility of studying these particles firsthand. Um, when I was a student in the 90s, our theory, the standard model, wasn't even complete. It was like this small periodic table I showed you with still some empty spots. And um, this particle, we could predict to be there, but we haven't seen them yet. And the beauty of this theory is that it would allow us to make calculation to know where and how to look for these particles and to find the missing guys. So I left Italy and I traveled where the machines were. First, I went to the Fermi lab in Chicago in the United States, and then I ended up at CERN that is now the biggest laboratory for particle physics. At CERN, you can find the LHC, the Large Hadron Collider. The Large Hadron Collider is really large. It's 
made by a tunnel of a circumference of 27 kilometers that is built 100 meters below ground. And inside, we accelerate particles close to the speed of light and we smash them together. So creating collisions <laughs> is already a challenge all in itself because the beams of these particles are so small and it's like firing two needles for 20 kilometers apart to meet in the middle and smash in the head. Through the relation E equal MC squared though, we know that energy transforms into matter and then we can create these new particles that we want. And the even more interesting thing is that what we create cannot be seen directly. What do I mean by this? Um, these new particles that we create, they just live for a minuscule moment. And then, as I said, they retransform back into ordinary ones. So it's like we have, imagine, two apples, we crush them into each other with a lot of energy, and they give out a pumpkin. But then the pumpkin disappears, and we are left with just the seeds flying. So this is the moment where particle physicists become detectives. And we must use the traces left behind by what was produced to reconstruct and figure out the particles that was created. It's exactly like when you see track on the first snow and you want to uh, figure out which animal has left them. But how do we see these traces? we use particle detectors. And you would think a particle is really tiny, right? How big a particle detector can be? Well, I work with a detector that is called CMS at the LHC, which is a beautiful, very photogenic detector, right? And it is also as big as a three-story building, not small. So why does it have to be so big? Well, it's because this particle that we create have a lot of energy and it takes a big distance and a lot of material to stop them. We literally destroy the particles to measure their energy. And so the longer the path in our detector, the more chances we have to make measurement. This is one of the detectors also uh, that was used to discover the last missing piece of the standard model, uh, the Higgs boson in 2012. Uh, so the existence of the Higgs was already postulated 50 years before in the 60s by three different theorists, Braut, Engler and Higgs. And this particle is very special in the standard model because it's the one responsible for the fact that all the other particles get a mass. And so basically, again, matter, they become matter as we know it. So it is a very, very important answer that we wanted to find. And this is one event. And I say we because we're talking about discovering a tiny particle and we are literally thousands of experts working with this giant CMS detector. And the perception when we talk about discoveries is always that there must be some single med scientist locked up somewhere in a lab that pulls all the strings. Um, the media always needs to put a face and a name uh, to things. And when we apply for grants, the evaluators never like our scientific publication with thousands of signatures. Well, we are different uh, from other scientific fields because we are a collaboration of the thousands that found a particle and I'm proud to be one of them. In particle physics, discovering a particle or studying it is like making a very complicated dish with many, many ingredients. Usually when we see the cooking show, the cook comes and tells us the list of ingredients, how to, how to assemble them, how to cook the dish, right? But do we ever think of the job of preparing all the ingredients, uh, making sure they are fresh, uh, making sure that they are good quality, that they are cut, that they are measured? This is essential for the recipe to succeed, right? If you use a rotten tomato, the dish would never would be great, right? So this is very similar, for instance, uh, to the job that I had during the Higgs discovery. In other words, I was preparing the data so that the final analysis would be easy and correct. 
And our CMS detector has millions of components that all need to work perfectly together. And we need to verify each and every one of these million of parts, because if even only one of them doesn't work, we could have a completely wrong result. So you see, each collaborator brings their individual but necessary piece to the puzzle, from building the detector, collecting the data, reconstructing the data, analyzing the data, to arriving at the final result, to be scrutinized by everyone before becoming public. The truth is that in CMS, thousands of highly qualified experts contribute, working as a team in a very complex and connected network to study and learn more about the smallest component of matter so that we can expand our knowledge. We all get excited and emotional, I do, <laughs> watching humans landing a robot on Mars. But you should know that at CERN, we face the same type of incredible technical challenges every single day every time we run the LHC, when we take data, when we analyze our data, every day we push the frontiers of technology a little further. Just as with space expedition, we challenge the concept of what is possible to satisfy the needs of our experiments. This is because the instruments we need cannot be bought at the store. We must design and build them ourselves. And from this, in fact, we also gain amazing technological benefits that improve the life of everyone. Maybe if not today, it will be for the next generations. So now we filled all the boxes in the standard model, which is a great accomplishment. However, I did not really tell you everything. I have no time. <laughs> but this is just a small part of the answer to the big questions still open in particle physics. On the other hand, because this model is complete, for the first time, we do not have a clear path ahead. Today, we find ourselves at a point where we need a sharper image of what is around us to figure out what next. For this, we need bigger energies and bigger machines, but we also need new points of view. A more diverse scientific community is a fertile ground for original and innovative ideas. And one aspect of increasing diversity is getting more young women in science, as I did. And also tapping into the excellence of women already in the field, often still neglected. Women bring not just brilliant scientific minds, but also emotional intelligence skills, empathy, communication, openness to the others' contributions are essential tools for our future even bigger collaborations. We particle physicists are explorers of the infinitely small, because as you know by now, particle matters to all of us. They are the smallest pieces to answer the biggest questions. Thank you.